Okay, so you want to know how to say a word in English. So you type it in the online dictionary, and voila, there it is. There's the word in English. But how do you pronounce it? What can you do? You can look at the phonetic transcription. But there's a problem. These have symbols which are scary that you don't know what they mean. Well, listen. I'm going to make the international phonetic alphabet really, really easy for you. And at the end of this video, I've got a little test for you, and I'm pretty sure you are going to be able to look at the phonetic transcription of words and know exactly how to pronounce them. So let's go. Now I'm Greg from EnglishWithGreg.com. On this channel, I teach advanced British English pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary to help you master English conversation. And this topic was one that was requested by quite a few of my subscribers: basic phonetics. So let's go. There are 44 sounds in English. That means there are 44 phonetic symbols that we need to know if we want to be able to look at a phonetic transcription of a word and know how to pronounce that word. Okay, 44 sounds a lot. Yeah, well, don't worry because 24 of those are consonants, and for 16 of the consonants, the phonetic transcription is exactly as you would expect it to be. It is basically the letter that it usually represents in written English. For example, the T sound is like that. The D sound is like that. The G sound in Greg is like that. The R is like that. The F is like that. The B is like that. So we don't need to worry about that. If you read a phonetic transcription, you can easily understand 16 consonants without me teaching you anything. So of the 24 consonants, 16 are easy. You already know them. Let's forget them. We just now need to look at eight, and six of those are scary, but they're not too bad. Here are the scary six. This one looks a little bit like an S, right? But it's not an S. No, this one instead is the sh sound that we have in shop or ship or wash. Sh. So you can remember that because it's similar to an S, and the sound is very usually written with an S H. Sh sh. The next scary one is this. Now pronounce the last sound again, shh, and at the same time, I want you to vibrate your voice, shh. That is this sound, and you find this sound in words like treasure, treasure, or pleasure, pleasure. The next scary one is this. Wait a second, that's that's two. Letters, right? Well, yes, but it's actually just one sound, and it's actually the sound that we use at the beginning and the end of church, church. And in a similar way, the next scary one is this. Again, it's like two symbols, but it's actually one sound, and we already know the second one. I just told you, it's z. So what happens when we put the d sound before z? It sounds like j j. It's the sound at the beginning of June and July, or at the end of the word bridge. Bridge. Okay, the next scary one is this. But do you know in your language what the name of this Greek symbol is? It's theta in English. Theta. And that's the sound that this represents. Theta, like think or Thursday. Now this is the last scary one, but in my opinion, it's a little bit similar to the theta, but it's not. Let's try vibrating our voice at the same time. Th, th, and that is this sound. It's the sound in this and that. Okay, so they were your six scary ones, and there are two more which are not scary but confusing. Perhaps we have this. And what happens when a word ends ng? Well, it sounds like this: shopping, ng, going. It's a sound that starts being produced through the nose、mm, and finishes with a ng in your throat. Ng, ng. And that is this symbol. If you see it, it probably just means that the word ends with ng. 
And the other confusing one is this, because it looks like a J, like June and July, but actually this represents the pronunciation of the letter Y, like yes and young, because as you know, the sound in June and July is that one. J June, July. This one is y. Yes, young, popular, popular. Okay, so we had 44 sounds, 24 were consonants, there were only six scary ones and two confusing ones, and the rest are vowels. 20 vowel sounds. What? Okay, so of the 20 vowels, eight are diphthongs. And a diphthong is when two vowel sounds combine to make one other vowel sound. They are easy if you know the other vowel sounds. We'll look at those later. They'll be easy once you learn the rest. So from 20, we are down to 12. And of those 12, five are exactly as you would expect them to be. In phonetics, the I of ship is written like this. The U in bug is written like this. The E in bed is written like this. The O in hot is written like this, which requires a little bit more imagination, but no, not too much. And the A sound in apple is written like this. So again, we need a little bit of imagination, but hey, the first part of that looks exactly like an A, so it makes sense that that is the sound in apple. One really important thing in phonetics is that if you see a vowel with two dots after it, that simply means that it's a long vowel. So that is the I of ship, but that is the long version E, of sheep. That is o uh, of butt, and that is u uh, of boot, that is a uh, like cat, and that is the long version ah uh, like cart. Again, just a long version of that a uh, vowel. And that is o uh, like pot, and that is the long version o uh, like port. Well, that was an easy four, and it only leaves three. And one of those is this sound, which I personally don't use. <laughs> uh, in my region of England, we don't use this. I say cup, much, and butt with this symbol, cup, much, butt. And in the south of England, they would say cup, much, butt with that symbol. That leaves two sounds. And yes, these are scary symbols and very, very important sounds. They are the schwa sound, which is the most common sound in English. It's everywhere. It's in words which end er, or, our, like better, actor, color. It's in lots and lots of structure words, like little grammar words, like to, like I'm going to the shops, I want to be, or for, like that's for you, for, for you. Listen, it's absolutely everywhere. Where and when we use it is for a different lesson. Just know that this is the sound we make when we relax our lips, we relax our tongue, we relax the back of our mouth and we relax our throat. And we just make a very, very short noise with everything relaxed. Uh, uh. That is the schwa sound. And the other scary one is this, which I call the disgusting sound because it's, well, it's the sound you make when you think something is disgusting. It's actually the long version of the schwa sound. So if we say the schwa sound again, uh, uh, if we make a long noise, uh, uh, that is the disgusting sound. And we find that in words like perfect nurse world. This is a really, really important sound. But again, where and when we use that is for a different lesson. Okay, so the only thing that we need to talk about now is diphthongs. There are eight diphthongs and hey, there's only eight left. And you thought phonetics was confusing. Now diphthongs might be scary because you're suddenly seeing two symbols very close together, but really it's completely logical. Let's have a look at them. This is one. And as is the case with all diphthongs, you will now recognize both of the symbols 
that make this diphthong. In this case, we have the short I followed by the schwa sound. So what happens when you pronounce one sound immediately after the other sound? Ear, ear, ear. So, I mean, what else could that be? Ear. It's the sound of this, ear. It's the sound in the word beer or here. Easy, next. Again, say them together. E, E, A, 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 A. Easy, it's the sound in A, like A, B, C, or the sound in day or they. The next one, again, say them together. O, E, O, E, O, E, O, E, O, E, O, E. It's the sound in boy and toy. A, E, A, E, A, I, I, I. It's the sound in I or by. A, U, ow, ow. It's the sound in mountain or brown cow. Now, there are only two which need a little bit more imagination. There's this one, which is the schwa sound, followed by the o, uh, o, o, o. Words like go and though, o. And the next one is this, which is e, followed by e, uh, e, uh, e. Uh. And this is the sound in words like e, uh, there, and pear. Right, there's one more which is kind of dying. It's this one, seven together, uwa. Uh. And you will see this in words like tourist or poor. So if we say it using that sound, it would be tourist or poor. And I think normally nowadays people do not use that, but instead they tend to favor the long o oh sound or that we find in words like for. The tourist knocked on the door or or. Okay, you wanted basic phonetics. All I've taught you is six scary consonants two confusing consonants and two scary vowels. And the rest is pretty simple. Am I right? Now, there's one more very important thing that you need to know when you're reading phonetic transcription of a word, and that is this fella. It's just like a little apostrophe, and the apostrophe is written before the stressed syllable can really make it difficult for native speakers to understand you if you put the stress on the wrong syllable. So that is a very important thing when you are reading a phonetic transcription of a word. Right, let's have a look at the phonetic transcription of 10 words using the International Phonetic Alphabet. And I want you to work it out and tell me what that word is. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one. Okay, so the first sound is the scary symbol that is not an S, but it's a sh, sh, o, g, and then the schwa at the end, which is uh, sh, o, g, uh, sugar, sugar, sugar. Next one. Okay, so it begins with this t, sh combination, which is ch, ch. We then have the diphthong, a, ch, and then n, chain. You know the next one, it's the d followed by j, 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 change. And what's at the end? Ing. Changing. How are you doing? Next one. Okay, what's the Greek symbol? It's the theta. That is the disgusting sound. Uh, f. The z is as you would pronounce a z, z, fuzz. And then the end is day. Thursday. Okay, the next one. Not too complicated, just two scary symbols in the middle. Remember, the first one was zh, and the next one is the schwa, uh. So, in the middle we have zh, and the rest is easy. Vision, vision. Next. Okay, so don't be confused by the J in the middle. We know now that represents the Y sound. The last sound is the schwa sound, uh. So this is popular, popular. Easy. Right, the next one. Hmm. Okay, this has the symbol that I don't use, but that's no problem. The end has the scary one that's similar to the th sound, v, and the end is the schwa, v. Mother. Mother. Okay, the next one is an important one. Okay, I don't think this is too difficult, but look where the little apostrophe thing is. <laughs> it's in the middle, which means that we stress the last syllable there. It's after, and then we stress afternoon. Afternoon. Okay, number eight. 
Not too difficult. It has the O sound, so, so, which can be written like this, so, or this, so. Look at this. Right, three sounds, w, or, k, walk. Do you see an L there? No. So it's a silent L. We know it's a silent L, but look at the phonetic transcription. There is no L in this word, so don't pronounce it. Walk. And finally, this one. Okay, this has two sounds, the M and a diphthong. And the diphthong, remember, it's the sound air, 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 like there. So the pronunciation of this is meh. And that is how we pronounce this word, meh. So how did you do from those 10? Leave me a comment to let me know how many you got right. If you like this video, there are another couple of videos there which will really help you improve your British English pronunciation. So watch one of those next. Thanks for being here and I'll see you there. Bye for now.